Go get your brushes, go get your paint And this is how you do it, the show she away I'm gonna teach you, be ready to learn Cause when I'm done, it's your turn Take your time, steady and You can do it by the show she can And tomorrow, watch your clothes Hey, we are live. It is Shoshi from Shoshi's Minis, and I just had a little derp there on my stream deck. I pressed the wrong button. I started the wrong song. And I want to say, hey, Gern's Bane and Krylos 737, Spear 1959, thank you so much for speaking of a chat. Rebel Star Raider, Teviston, 19 months. Oh my gosh. Mad love for that sub. Thank you so much. That is awesome. Let me write down your name. How's everybody doing? It is Wednesday. Let's write this up here. Subscribers, mad loves. Look at the loves right here. Teviston for 19 months. Thank you for that. Mad love. Speaking Beast. Oh my gosh, that's such a great name. How are you? All right, 
So we got some cool things on today. So if you cannot go to ReaperCon and you were interested in checking out my classes, this is the stream for you because I'm going to be giving a little demonstration of each of my classes. We've got three hours, we've got three classes. It's Thursday, it is, oh, that's right, it's, it's Australia. I was like, did I just go crazy and stream on the wrong day? But yes, it is Thursday in Australia right now. <laughs> Have a good Thursday for you. You're just starting your day too. I know it's morning there. Um, but yeah, so, okay, so we've got three classes. We've got metallic metals, true metallic metals. We've got skin tones, which you guys have seen me demo lots of times. It's pretty much going to be the same one on a, on a different model. And then I'm going to be dem demonstrating my basics, basics class. So I'll probably do that one first. Um, and it will be basic. And, but yeah, so the reason for me to do this is twofold. One, to allow you guys who've never taken my classes or maybe you live in Australia and I won't ever get over there and so you won't be able to, you won't be able to take my classes unless you manage to fly all the way to the U.S. So this is your chance to have virtual Shoshi, Shoshi, virtual Shoshi teacher. And so you get all of these classes on Twitch for free, but my students who are going to go to ReberCon and take the class and use these models will not only um, get to take the classes with me one-on-one -on -one and get the, that one-on-one -on -one experience, which is completely different from, um, from anything, from Twitch, from, from, from my, uh, what do you call it, my Skype, Skype coachings, all of that. One-on-one -on -one is the best. Right? You learn so much. You can ask. You can get direct feedback right away. It's just, it's, it's a whole different thing. But they are going to be able to use these videos as refresher courses so that, let's say they learned something, but they just didn't remember exactly what I was saying or something, or they didn't take good notes. They'll be able to come back to this video and watch it on, watch it on YouTube because I'm going to upload it later. Virtual scary, virtual Shoshi is even more scary than real life Shoshi. That's, that's true. Darling, how are you? Mad love. <laughs> All right, so let's do, let me, I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to teach my basics class. Now, I know that Diomedes over here is already a teacher, so maybe he, you, maybe you can give me a little critique, maybe after the class. I'm sure like you've seen me teach before, so you know, already know what you're headed for. But, all right, I got my wet palette. Also, something that's kind of cool. Oh man, let me move that. I'm gonna adjust my camera just a second. I just, re oh, we can leave it there. I just remembered, I always try to bring my Redgrass Games palettes to my classes so that you get a chance to use those firsthand. And I also, I try to bring them to, I try to bring them to my cons so that you can, you can sometimes buy them from me. I don't bring very many, but I have a few that I bring to each con. All right, so this is my red grass holder. I've got little pieces of paper clip. Well, there we go. Little, hi, Craw Father, how are you? Shoshi, you're so right. I bought a DVD set about making le leather making years ago. You've watched that thing time and time again, worth every penny. Yeah, hey, Palace of Pep. So I, anyway, I've got a little paper clip, super glued inside my Reaper Bones models. If you've not ever, if you've never used um, Reaper's Bones models, they're excellent. I think I might need to adjust my camera after all. It looks like white balance is also off. Give me one second. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's a little better. Mm. Let me, let me change that just a skosh. Skosh is not the same as schmutz. I said it, you can do the, you can do the alert. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do properties. Let's see, hold on, okay. White balance is, let's do that. And we'll do focus. There, oh, that's much better. Okay, look at the difference. All right, so this is my this is what I'm going to teach my basics. And the reason why I chose this model is because um, you've got metal and you've got cloth and you've got a little bit of skin, but um, he's a perfect kind of like a little D&D &D model that you might 
that any average person is going to maybe pick and choose. And it'll give us enough details to work with to try to get something that, that a beginner will be happy to take home. So this basics, basics class is for a straight up beginner. And you guys, I want you to help me. <laughs> yeah, it works. Six, we changed it. So do you see how it says six many times? <laughs> it's because I messed that up a little bit. But they said to leave it because it's funny. Six many times. <laughs> All right. So while I am, while I'm teaching this, if you guys have good bait, like if you're, if you have good questions that you think a beginner might ask, you're going to be also teaching me how to teach these kids, these, these adults, these beginners. All right. You're not kids. You know what you're doing. All right, so the first thing I'm going to tell everyone is that I've done a zenithal priming. And what zenithal means is basically from the noon, from the zenith. But you, you don't have to prime from that. So I start with black. I spray. Now, Bones Miniatures do not need primer. So don't use a, an aerosol primer on Bones whatsoever because it will melt the plastic. I used airbrush. But you can also paint on the primer. And so if you have, if you are a beginner, that's what I would do. I'd use either just plain paint, don't even prime them at all, or I would, I would paint on the primer. What's the difference between an entry level sculpt and a high end sculpt? Not really much. I, I wouldn't even call this an entry level sculpt because it's just, it's just something like a lot of beginners are going to start in there and they're going to want maybe their D&D &D figure painted first. They're maybe not army painters. So that's why I choose this one because they could go home and use this right now in their D&D game. So I want them to get a model that they're gonna be happy with, that's gonna have enough detail they'll remember how to do stuff. You always still reprime? Yes, so do I. So what I've done is I've airbrush primed, which if you are a beginner, just paint prime it. And then you can do a dry brush of white on the top. And that's what that's going to do is that's going to leave your dark shadows and give you definition. Another thing you can do is prime it with, with white and do a little like a sepia wash with just maybe some seraphine sepia um, shade from Citadel. Yeah, this is a good choice. Okay, so... The first thing I'm going to tell my students is that I'm going to paint from the inside going out. So the very furthest thing is going to be the skin. That's the most inner part of the model. And then I'm going to work my way up and out, coming up to these buttons and these, this buckle being probably the last thing in these little studs. And the reason why is because you can go back and... Like when I paint the skin, if I, if I paint outside the lines, then when I go to paint his cowl, then I will be able to clean that up. What's the difference between feathering and wet blending? Wet blending is when you take two, two, um, two colors of paint and you're, you're blending them together while they're both wet, right? Um, feathering is you've got maybe a dry color and then you feather it with your brush using this kind of motion and then it, it it's almost like a little like a cross hatching almost you can you can feather and wet blend at the same time you can feather your wet blend in right but you can't wet blend your feather in does that make sense <laughs> inside out of all body parts can you expand let's let's show i'm better i mean it's going to be better if i show you and then you'll see. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out a, a skin color. And I think I will go. So this is basics, basics. So we're going to do basic colors. We're not going to do lots of shading. We're going to use the model, the model shading and highlighting as is. And maybe use a few washes. But very simple. I want, I want my students to be able to color this in. This is very simple coloring is what it is. I'm finding the right color here. Okay, let's do, let's do, here, this one's good. Nope, that's not the right color either. Huh. I'm going to use just a basic flesh, and I'm not going to use paint names, because for somebody who's a beginner, 
whatever you're going to be able to find easily in your game store or even at your art store if you can't if you don't have a game store that's the color that I want you, you know that's the that's the brand I want you to use something that you can find easily because the brand name doesn't matter as much inside out let's see you know all these things just a question oh yeah that's a great question okay they probably wouldn't they probably wouldn't know those terms because these are people who maybe have never picked up models before all right so I'm gonna hold I'm gonna hold my model on a on like a medicine bottle if I don't have one of these nice holders or even a little craft block you can get like wooden craft craft blocks at Michaels okay and the first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna thin out my paint that's another thing that's very important I've got this wet palette and it's naturally soaking up water from from the sponge but I'm still gonna put a bottle a bead of water on here and drag my paint into it so that I can create different consistencies of my paint to choose from okay I don't have my paint dilution thing do I yes I do haha -ha. okay so this is just to, as a demo oh it's already wet why is it wet so this is a paint dilution measure thing and the level of thinness is going to be one of these layers. It's going to be medium or light probably. See that? That's about perfect. You can kind of barely still see the little bullseye. See that one's a little bit lighter. Whoops, I got too much paint for that one. Barely see the little bullseye in there and that's about how thin you want it. All right, now I'm going to layer this over his hand and you can kind of already see that the darker things are not entirely covered up. They kind of act like stained glass. You're going to be able to see a little bit of your underpainting of your primer there. That's exactly what you want to begin with. And same thing with this hand. And just try to stay in the lines. Try to try to stay on his hand. Try not to go on his coat or his uh, weapon there if you can. When, when you find that paint guide, because it was, where can you find that paint guide? So these, I don't know if they make them anymore. Paint dilution um, testers are available at, where are they available? They're, be, they're really only really necessary for teaching, but they're available at bencomets.com. And like I said, I don't know if he's still making them. They were out last time I checked. But they're, they're I mean, yeah, they're really only necessary if you're trying to show someone else how to get the same same level of dilution. And again, I'm painting over his whole face, but notice how you can kind of still see a little bit of that shadow peeping through your thin layer of paint. And that that is the skin for a basic. We might go back and just touch up a little bit. I'm going to leave that and let that dry. When you're painting, you don't want to be going back into your wet paint over and over again because it will, as it's drying, it will create a little skin. And as you brush into it, it will also crumble up kind of like cottage cheese and you'll, or you'll like paint a little hole in it. So, all right, now we're going to go to the next layer. And on him, I think I'm going to choose this cowl and his pants to be the same color because I think that'll be interesting. And a, when you're painting a basic model, kind of think of like three strong colors that you think will look good together. And a good um, rule of thumb, especially if you're doing like a space marine or some kind of army, is to go for football team colors because those are always gonna be very striking. That's why they choose them. They're often complementary colors like purple and yellow, turquoise and orange, you know, blue and orange. Hi, Ty Love, Huggles and Love. Yes, we're teaching. We're teaching a basics course right now. I'm gonna try to get each one of these minis painted in an hour. So let's um, time me. We'll, we'll try to stick to that. So let's, I'm gonna let chat um, help me here. How about we use, I think I'm, if we did teal and we did brown, brown is a shade of orange. That would be good. 
So what could we, yeah, let's do his coat teal and his pants brown. And we'll make it a, a orangey brown. That will work out. Here is burnt orange. Let me see if I've got anything. Yeah, that'll work. And then we'll choose a blue for his, um, blue for his coat. So these will be, this will be a striking. Now, you don't have to choose striking, but again, it does. I'm gonna use dark blue. That, those are both dark, actually. Do I want that? No, I'm gonna choose a lighter blue. That's green. Let's go with, there we go. That's a, that's an alchemy, I don't want that. Here we go, Caspian Blue, that's a good one. Jacob Jansen, hello! Don't remember, the, the, the brand doesn't matter. So I'm choosing, where's my orange I wanna show it to you? I'm gonna mix a little bit of, um, to make that a little bit darker, I'm gonna mix a little bit of green into that. Maybe a little bit. Mixing is not very beginner, is it? So I just wanna show you here. We'll mix a tiny bit of transparent brown with, this is almost like an ink. But I just wanna make my orange a little darker and I don't wanna dig out another paint. There we go, just a little bit, watch. So I've got my, my brown. That's sort of better, that didn't do anything. There. There we go. That's an orangey brown. That's kind of more what I wanted. Perfect. <laughs> All right, so I'm starting. We're making the coat blue. The coat's not next. The cowl is. So again, I'm gonna thin out my paint, pull that down. Same thickness as the first one. And I'm gonna very carefully, I'm gonna outline the face so that way it's almost like you're kind of creating a border so that when it's when you're ready to paint the rest, you can just go quickly or more quickly. Yeah, that looks cool. Okay, so again, the thinness helps the rest of it show through. There we go. And if this is your first mini, and if you go over the lines, don't worry, because we're gonna be doing the metal next over on his shoulders, because he's got some like chain mail. All right, and then his pants, we're gonna paint those, do the knees. Remember, if you guys have questions while I'm on the exact thing I'm doing, please ask, because it's much easier to teach on the fly. Okay, so he's got little crisscrosses on his legs. Just paint right over it because we're gonna go back over that carefully with another color. And that's why we're painting from the inside out, right? Because we're painting the pants layer first and then we'll paint the crisscross legging straps afterward and that'll be our are out, right? Inside out. Does that make sense? You're gonna watch this video again and again and write this down. Awesome, good. And this is a great, great video. This will be a great video to show your friends who you also wanna get into painting and paint with you. Cause you'll be able to watch it together and do it together. You can, and you can stop the video if you wanna Work on something a little bit and then start it up again. Okay, so that's my second layer. Nose is drying pretty quickly. You can see the top of the legs are already drying. That's good. We're not gonna go back into that yet. We need this to completely dry before we go on to the next color for those crisscross straps. Pull that down, referring to the color. So, what did I say? So pull it, 
you're pulling the color, you put the color on, and then you're pulling it down on down over the whole whole leg. Right? That's what I meant. Good. Thank you for for answer for asking that. All right, next, let's, I'm going to show you again what, what I mean by pull it down. So I'm going to pull it down like that. A lot of painting is, is pushing and pulling. This is the blue. Now with this, okay, remember how I said we're going to make, we're going to color in the lines? First, we're going to draw in our lines. So I'm going to draw in my line right there and right there. Now, I have this whole space where I can paint much faster because I don't need to worry about, look at that, how crisp that became. If you will paint a bigger model, it will be very similar. Yes, Bruno. Um, if, if I'm doing, um, oop, I just noticed this little bit back here, I can kind of carefully go in there. See, that's the other thing. Okay, so. I do this a lot, and this is one of the reasons why I'm so fast, is I'll paint my edges first, paint those edges. Oopsie, I went over it. I went onto the, the chain mail a little bit. And now, see, now I can bring that and pull that down so that whole piece is covered. And look at how crisp and clean it is. I didn't get any on, on my pants. What brush am I using? I'm using I'm using a little bit more expensive brush, but if you want to start and use a craft brush or, you know, this is a Winsor Newton. I I want to say it's like 7 or 8 dollars, but the money that you spend on it is going to be worth worth it. It's going to last a long time. Um, eventually over time, let me see if I can find an example. Um, a, eventually over time, I sit it at like a craft brush is going to curl on you, or a synthetic brush. This is a Kalinsky Sable brush. So see how this is, I don't know if you can see this. Hold on, let me rinse my brush. This has a little bit of a curl to the tip there. Can you see that? That is because the synthetics will eventually curl on you. And, and some people get used to that and they, they use that, but hi, Javus, Javasuka, we are doing basically demonstrations of, of what I'm going to be teaching at ReaperCon. So this is my basics class and um, I'm showing everybody exactly how I would teach a beginner class example. Yes, there you go. Thank you, Diomedes. Okay, so there. So remember how we're going to paint our edges. So I'm going to start over here and paint my edge. So I'm not painting on the hand. That's the part where I want to be slow and careful. Like this. I'll be really careful. And over here, paint all, paint all the edges that are close to something else. Okay. Right? Now my edges are painted while it's still wet. I can go in and paint quick in the rest. And I teach I teach kids at school to do this too. I'll show you my little example. When let's say I'm coloring something, let's here's a house, right? I'm going to teach the kids to paint slow and careful around the edge, right? This goes for drawing too if you want to learn how to color or learn how to draw or learn how to paint. I'm going to I'm going to paint slow and careful around the edge and then I can go a little faster and look at it comes out clean and crisp. Hi Nolunis, how are you? All right, so that is the first. Okay, now this is going to be a little trickier cuz his arm is down there behind the shield. So again, I'm going to paint my edges. I'm going to be careful. This part is really tricky. The most important thing, so, is not to go over my hand where I don't want paint. Okay, and then on the elbow. 
And I don't have to paint every single part. Like down here where it's black in there, I can leave that. I can just go on over the part that has the white and that way I've got my, I've got my, um, my shadow already ready. All right, that's, that's my first steps. And just for kicks, I think I will make his shoes also blue. Because one in in a beginning tabletop level miniature, they usually say three three colors, a wash, and a highlight, and that's a good rule of thumb to get a real basic quick mini. So we're gonna we're gonna paint, and you can see I've got blue, blue, blue. I've got orange, orange. Once I get my little crisscross in there, that'll be that'll be good too. All right. Try to, try to paint in threes. So like I've got three areas of blue, I'd like to have three areas of orange that may not work out. Well, actually, no, I take that back. Oh, Mike's computer's beeping. I'm gonna go ahead and paint this whole thing here and his belts orange as well, because I'm gonna just assume that that's made of an orangey leather. And again, I'm gonna carefully, now I just made a mistake. I should have painted the chainmail first. So here, we'll just ignore that. I won't go further. We're gonna do the chainmail next because it is on the next layer. And I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna choose a silver color. Here's silver. It's not a dark silver, it's not a light silver, it's just a silver. Because we're gonna add a wash to it to give it some definition later. Okay, again with my same, that is a really bright silver. With my same rules, I'm gonna try to paint my edges. There. I think I wanna use a darker silver, what do you guys think? If you were going to teach a, a beginner, would you start with a darker silver and highlight it? I think maybe that might look better. Let me get my darker silver out. So this is a black silver. Let's see how this looks like. That's the other thing I want to teach you, is that if you're a beginner and you don't like the color that you put down, just let it dry a little bit, come back, because you're, pinning, you're painting thinly. Oh yeah, that's much better. You're painting thinly you'll be able to fix it no problem. Okay, so we're gonna just use this darker silver. Any rule of thumb on how much paint to add to the palette? Just a few drops, because you don't need a lot. The mini is small. So I would say start out with just a few drops and see, see if you need more later. See, this is dry now. I can paint right over that. Make beautiful mistakes. That's the first thing I'm also going to tell you to do. It's okay to make mistakes. Make lots of them so that you can learn how to fix them. Don't try to be perfect every single time. All right, so this one, if you get something on that belt, it's okay because we're going to add orange to it after the fact. Yeah, that, that darker silver makes a much a big, much bigger difference, I think. All right, I'm noticing while I'm painting, I'm noticing little things about his outfit, and I see that there's a little thing here that could. It's like a what's resting. The metal is resting on top of it, so I think I'll paint that orange. I'm gonna leave that blank for now. It doesn't matter if I get if I if I get a little silver on it, I can cover it. So I'm not gonna fuss over it. Okay, let's do, let's do this whole hat silver as well. Any, oh, hey darling, <laughs> he's so cute. This paints pretty quickly, doesn't it? Right over that top. There we go. 
in and paint my edge because I don't want to get anything on the on the cow. And if I do, remember I can go back and fix it if I need to. Has anyone here ever taken a basics class? Or did you just learn and teach yourself? Oh, I got a little on his thumb, so we're gonna fix that in a minute. When you make a mistake, do you just repaint the other color, or is it possible to remove the tint in some ways? If you're fast and it's still wet, you can take your wet brush and you can mop it back off. In fact, that worked right there pretty well. So that's one thing you can do. You can also just take the, the paint where you made a little mistake and go back over it, just like that. You can also, and this doesn't work as well, if it's already dry, sometimes you can take a little bit of um, a, uh, what's it called, a nail polish remover pen. It has a little acetone in it and you can just, you know, take it and get just that, burnish off that little bit of paint. It's, it, it, will, it could eat a hole in your paint though, so don't do it unless you're gonna be very light handed with it. Never took a class, but you bothered the employees at your local GW store. Yeah, I, hired, I very much, yep, and I am cleaning my brush in my water cup. It's my little, it's actually, you can get these little yogurts. Um, they're called We by YoPlay, French style yogurt. They taste amazing. So if you like yogurt, you can empty those out and then they're, what's nice about those is you can, use them over and over again and wash them and everything like that. Just put a little Windex in it to get the paint out. That's a good question that you asked Bruno Tor. I appreciate that. Let's do this whole sword silver. Again, we're doing basics, so we're not using a ton of colors on a, on a basic, basic model. Oh, I, I missed a spot on his on his shoulder there, good. Oh, a little another spot right here. So he's almost ready to go out adventuring, isn't he? Let's do the edge of this shield. and the inside of the shield as well. I'm getting a little quick. I can tell I'm getting too quick. I need to slow down. I'm just working around. Notice that I'm, I'm turning the model. I'm not so much turning my brush. And that's because you want to get in this, the habit of using the same angle with the brush each time to get the, the strokes really nice and smooth. That's how you get the, that's how I get my, my brush strokes smooth is I'm, I'm turning the model, not the, not the brush. Okay, so this part, you can go in and, this is a little closer to this other belt, so I'm being a little bit more slow and careful whenever I'm trying to fill things in. Oh, I forgot this part up here. Yay, Yuzawood, how are you? It isn't Friday yet, but it is getting close and it's only one day till Friday for the Australians. They get, they get Friday tomorrow already. Um, speaking of Friday, will not be, um, I will not be live because I will be um, at a funeral in Michigan. Oh, we gotta get this whole side of the, I forgot this side of the sword. Stay tuned because we're gonna be teaching true metallics on this model. This guy is gonna be my true metallics class and we're gonna go wind depth with that. And then I'm also gonna be teaching a skin tones class. So um, this'll be probably the third hour of this and this'll be the second. So we're not just gonna stay with this model the whole time. We're only gonna spend about an hour on this guy. And actually only 30 minutes or so left of my hour. Okay. Did I get it all? I did. All right. We're all set. He's got a scabbard. I'm going to paint 
Uh, I think I'll use a different metal on the scabbard, just for kicks. Maybe. Yeah, we'll use a different metal also. Okay. Now. This is a good this is a good spot to look at your model. What do I want to do? I want to bring it out some of the some of the colors. It's a good time to start painting the second layer of the skin. Cuz the first layer is very thin, right? But now it should all be dry. So now we're highlighting. So that means we're leaving some of this with the thin layer. So you're going to just highlight by hitting the apex of that bit. So on the face, that's going to mean like the, the cheeks, right? The cheekbones are the apex, the chin and the upper lip and the a little bit of the bottom lip, not much. For this part, I'm going to just hit the tops of these Think of them as bumps, right? You're going to think of them as bumps. You're going to hit the tops of those bumps. So those stand out a little bit more. Oh, it's, well, you know, it's funny. It's, it's, it's sort of a loss, but it's sort of not. Um, my grandfather had a cousin who I never met, and I um, got to know his widow, and her name was Judy, and she had all this... Um, um, genealogical stuff. So I found out that I have a, her daughter is my s second cousin once removed, right? So second cousin once removed. Judy passed away and I'm going there to support my second cousin once removed. So it's, it's a very distant, but yeah, it's more to support her than anything because we just have such a small family. Am I planning to do whip, uh, um, whip Wednesday? Oh, I don't know. Let's, if we have time, we'll definitely do it. Okay, we'll, we'll tell you what, we'll make time at the end of the stream for sure. We'll do it. Geeky Girl Games, hello. Are all second layers highlights? It's just, yeah, a matter of judgment. So we might add a little wash now. If things aren't, things are pretty dark right now. Not too bad, but I'm going to add a little bit of a wash. Let me see if I've got my skin tone skin tone wash. I like to do um, Reichland Flesh Shade. The, um, this is a flesh wash from P3. They have some pretty nice ones. Basically, you just want a flesh wash. And I'm just going to put a few little drops in my thing here. He's going to be a little bit darker skin tone, I think, because of this wash. And then, again, you're gonna, we don't need to use a lot. We're gonna go over the skin and look at how that made everything de de more defined. Same thing over here. Once, once we've done our wash and let that dry, then we'll come back with a really nice, lighter color. His skin is gonna be a little bit on the yellow side because of this wash. I recommend Reichland Flesh Shade. It's got a little bit more red in it. It looks a little bit more natural, so he'll look a little bit more tanned. Do I always highlight before the wash? No, I highlight after the wash. We just did a second layer, so that would be lighter. Okay, so he's kind of a little bit yellowy right now. That's okay. It's more to define, define those shadows. So for... For my outfit here, I need a highlight, and I can either choose a, a lighter version of this, or I can add a little bit of, let's add a little bit of pastel yellow to my highlight. Yellow um, is a nice color to add instead of white, because white will sometimes make things chalky. I'm gonna mix that so it, I, I will, you can see that I, I do get a lighter version. I'm gonna add a little bit more. I get a lighter version of that same color without it being chalky and white. Some people do add white though. All right, so now, again, I'm thinking about where the light is. The light is coming down, and so I'm gonna co 
come up here and highlight. I need more yellow, don't I? Yes, I do. You can tell right away. If you can't see it, then it's not dark enough. Or it's not light enough, sorry. And I'm just going to touch that on there and on the fold of his outfit. And try to blend it in. If you need to, if you need to use that base color that you had to wet blend it, we were talking about feathering. This is how you do it, right here, like that. Yay, Yay Ingress, thank you for the follow. This is great. Thank you so much for sharing your technique. Thank you, Speaking Beast. Okay, same thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about where the light is hitting. He's got a shield here, so there's not gonna be as much light if my sunshine is here. And you can, one of the tricks that I do to figure out where my light is, is I'll, I'll get my phone and I'll put my flashlight on, right? And then I'll shine it to see where is the light actually hitting. I'm going to put it where the sun would hit it, see? And you can kind of see where the light is hitting it. And that's where you want to paint your highlights. See where the see where the light is not where I can see my color. That helps a lot, doesn't it? So that was that was a good spot to put highlight because there was a lot of light hitting that because it can reach it, right? Not so much on this side. So I'm gonna just put a few highlights, especially out on this leg, right? Like that. I'm gonna just do a little bit right there, just a smidge. Okay, now you're confused. You're saying you highlight after the wash. We haven't we haven't gotten to the skin, but you'll see what I'm saying. Don't wash this. Don't you don't have to wash everything, but we're gonna we're gonna wash the skin. And the reason why is because it's a lighter color. You're gonna need to use something for this. We're layering. We're not we're not washing the the clothing. We're layering. We're gonna just go up in value. So the top of the tops of his feet are gonna get hit by light, right? See that? And over here, my sunshine is coming from the shield side, so I have to think of it. So now I have to put my light as if it's going from here. It's still gonna be up on that light spot right there. Perfect, got it. All right, layering. We're layering on 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 the clothing. Now you can see where there's little folds. That's, you don't hit the shadow part, the, the crevices. Don't touch the crevices, just, just hit the, the apex of the, the volume, apex of the, um, the bump, the bump. All right, again, over here, sun is coming from, wait, sun is coming from shield direction. I always have to remember to reverse it, so that means there's gonna be more light on this side Right, get those apexes. So there. And this this shield, I don't know if lights, maybe a light, a little light's gonna hit that on the side, but most of it is the shield's gonna block that, so that will stay in shadow. This side of the shoe is gonna get light, right? This side won't because there's no light. Light is coming from this direction. This side, maybe just the back of the ankle, not the rest, and just the top of the foot. Okay. If I want to do a second layer, make sure that it's dry before I, I do that second layer. See how cool he's looking? Okay. Now, yeah, I like that actually. Looks good. We got that layer of the skin is drying. So I'm gonna choose a lighter color now. We're gonna choose tan flesh. I think that's lighter, is it lighter? Yeah, that's a lot lighter. I'm gonna choose a lighter flesh color now for his highlight, because now that we've got that shade on there, that's a way that we can kind of it's a quick way to shade without having to do 
a lot of layers. So now, ooh, big cat hair fuzz. Ugh. I'm gonna look where he, let me put this closer. Look to see where are his, the apexes of his, right here on this lip, right? The chin, under the cheeks. And don't try to paint it too hard, just try to tap it. See, we can just tap each one of those little fingers, the thumb. Think about where the light is hitting again. For every single thing, you're gonna think about the light. So over here, for sure, all of these knuckles are getting hit by sunlight, right? And this side of the thumb, for sure, is getting hit. Yeah. And I might even, wait, shield side, dang it. I messed it up. Shield side. So he's gonna have more light on one side of his face if I'm, if I'm choosing my light. Now this, this side of the hand is maybe only just gonna get that little row of fingers because the light is not going to hit most of it because of the shield. But look at how he is so much more defined now. Okay. Think about the shield side is the is the light, the sunlight. So that side's gonna get a little bit more light. I'm layering now. Just there we go. Alright. That side of the thumb is actually gonna have more light. You've learned so much already. You're washing all the things. The term layering in terms of highlights helped you so much. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, layering is a way um, to get those, to get those, so we might do, an, let me see if I can. So instead of adding yellow, I'm gonna try a little of this flesh tone and mix it with this blue and see if I can lighten this up a little bit more. It's still kind of gonna be a light green. Yeah, that, see that? You can, you can experiment with your layers and different colors to get, get that highlight. <laughs> Thank you, Rin Twin. Okay, so now for the belt across his, his um, well, let's use a third color because we want to have roughly three colors, not including the metals. Um, a color, so you want to think about colors that will work. Where's my color wheel? Do I have it handy? I probably don't. So if I don't have my color wheel handy, and I've got compliments here, so the next color would probably be a color that's close to one of these. So if I go with another color of brown, which is a good choice, because brown, all the browns are similar and next to each other on the color wheel. So we can use brown leather. It'll be perfect. And so much easier to be what you've done. Yeah. I didn't realize you guys weren't already doing that. That's, I guess I assumed. That's why it's good to have these little basics classes. You can learn so much. So again, I'm thinning this out a little bit, spreading it out on my palette adding a tiny bit of water, not too much water because this is such a small area, you wanna be able to cover everything. I gotta take glasses off for one second while I paint this. I'm just gonna paint that whole belt. I'm gonna paint the whole belt brown. There is a little buckle, I'm painting right over it for now because it's, it's on the next layer, if that makes sense. I don't need to worry about. I'm gonna make this belt also brown. I went ahead and skipped over that belt, that buckle. I don't even know if you can tell if there's a difference between my orange. Let's make this whole scabbard dark brown as well. Now on a basic, on a basic model, we're not we're not doing tons and tons of highlighting and shading. That's more intermediate. So we're getting our, we're getting our basic colors down. We're gonna get a 
Let's do these shoulder pads right here. Oh, I forgot this inside, inside of the scabbard right there. You know why I like teaching basics classes? Because for every basics class, we get at least one or two people into the hobby. And that is very, very important. All right, let's go ahead and make the, this side of his shield brown. Remember how I'm gonna paint inside my edges? This is a good example of how I'm gonna do that. Paint all of my edges first. And then, before it dries, try to make smooth strokes all in the same direction. So I can paint that, there we go. Okay, now, I'm gonna, so for example, we remember how I mixed brown with my orange? Now I'm gonna use my straight orange so that I've got my brighter color as my highlight. We're gonna layer this orange on top of my darker orange. I see a question. Rin Twin says, I need a spray booth to get my primer and base coats down, and then I can work on these brush gills. Yeah, um, you could also um, paint them on. You can paint primer on with brush, brush paint primer. Diamond says, this is, this is what I learn in my basics, what I assume is holding students back. Jargon is confusing, and basic, basics can often be skipped. That's true. Yep, I'm doing all this at ReaperCon. All right, so now, this is again, think about your apex. Where, so where is the light? We, here's our shield. Let's, let's shine the light on the, on the pants and everything so we can see. Okay, let's get that, there we go. So a lot of it's getting blocked by the shield, but I can still see that a good amount of we have the sun at two o'clock. It kind of goes, the light goes down this angle and just a little bit on that, on that part. You never tried, you've used spray cans. So you can't use spray cans on, on Reaper Bones models, which are great models to use as a beginner because, okay, you, um, you know, they're not expensive. All right, so over here, because we're kind of doing an angle of the sun from a two o'clock version, two o'clock. And I'm just hitting, notice that I kind of skip over the little crisscrosses because I just want to highlight the apex of those bits that are bright, right? So, see, and if I want that, if I want that to be, I'm gonna mix a little bit of that flesh tone with it. Notice I'm not, I'm not mixing white. Mix a little bit of that flesh tone with that orange to make it, it sort of gets pastel, but let's see what happens. Let's just look. Okay, I don't, I don't hate that. Let's try with the yellow. What happens when we mix yellow instead? The flesh tone made it a little bit more Chalky pastel, let's see what happens when we add. Let's add a regular yellow instead of a pastel yellow. This has more white in it, this one doesn't. We're just gonna add a tiny, tiny bit of yellow to our orange to brighten that up. Oh yeah, 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 oh yeah. That is gonna look cool. Okay, watch this. Brightening, brightening and it even looks like sunlight Right, that came out awesome. That looks good. You just have to, you have to play around, make mistakes. Shield, sun, sun is gonna hit every part of his little cow over here the most. So this is gonna get the most amount of our highlight color. And some of those little shadows are gonna get washed out because the sun is hitting that. And then a little bit 
on the edges here. See that? Sun is, I'm gonna uh, pretend I'm the sun. I'm gonna, see how I'm using a back and forth mopping motion? Now I rinse my brush and I got the, the water out and now I'm pulling this down, the paint, I'm pulling the paint down with like a little wiping, wiping, mopping motion. So I just have my little highlight on the top. I See how if I go back in and touch it, then I have to start over because I messed it up. Mop it down. That's better. Sun is coming from this way. There's our little highlight on the side of his leg. Do, 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 right? Thank you, Trillian. Oh my gosh, Trillian, you're crazy. That's so good. <laughs> How are you? It's a cheapie, but I'm going to show it to some love. Oh, good. Yes. Now, just, just adding a little bit more yellow to that. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's good. Swipe, 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 swipe. And then I rinse my brush, take the water back off, and then pull that down a little bit. See, I got a nice <laughs> chunky brush stroke. If you get a big brush stroke like that, you might be able to pull it out, but it, if not, it's okay. Don't let it dry. Then go back and fix it. Belos, good morning. Time to go to your game. Ah, that's awesome. We're doing, okay, so in the back, we're doing basically a basics, basics class for people. This whole scabbard's gonna get a nice little highlight down the side. And there we go. This is a little bit, this is slightly more advanced basics, I think, because I don't even know if you would highlight this much on a basic mini. All right, but that's good. I mean, right there, you could go and play that mini on a tabletop right away. All right, the last thing I'm gonna show you, because we are getting, we got two minutes left. I'm going to take Nolan oil, which is a wash from, from Citadel, if I can find it. Oh, come on, I, I have the gloss, but I don't wanna use the gloss because it's glossy. Is that Nolan Oil? That's Corelli Green Shade. Here it is. Nolan Oil by Citadel. It's a great shade for metals. I avoid using it too much on colored things, colored fabrics. Real quick, I'm gonna take this. Let's see, I'm gonna take a very light, light tan. A very light tan. This is tan shadow from Reaper. Doesn't matter. With, and I'm gonna carefully pick out these little cross crisscrosses here. Oh, is that even light enough? Might not even be light enough. I'm gonna add a little bit of that. Let's try that. There we go. I added a little flesh tone to my. It's got little straps. Notice how that's, this is the last layer, right? So it's gonna get painted last. That looks good. We can highlight this belt a little bit. Shield coming from the shield side, so highlight goes there. That's pretty light, so it's, it's looking stripey. We can take the base color and all right get these little straps real quick because I just want to show you what I meant by all right now this is my last thing with my Nolan oil I'm going to take it over my metal so here 
to give all of these little chain some definition. You can, t you can put it on other things too. I'm going to put it on the front of his leather. I'm being careful where, where I'm using it. I'm poking it into these recesses. And I'm, I'm dragging it over the metal because I want that to have definition. I'm not putting a lot of it on the other parts. You don't have to, if you wash everything with the dark, it becomes murky, right? And then we'll put a little bit on his hat. Ooh, yeah, that looks good. When I was uh, first starting, let's do some over here. A little wash across things that have um, a little bit of, maybe we can put that on that entire shield and the sword. All right. That has to dry. And then we can use our silver, which is our lighter color, and you can highlight. Again, where's the, where's the light coming from? Not that side. <laughs> I messed that up. Let's do this side. Think about where the light is. Right, tops of these. I lose some of my definition there. If it's still wet, it's gonna be harder to highlight. You can already kind of see the difference on that and right. All right, let me look at chat. I see some chats. Maybe a zero, zero or a three, zero. So I would get a zero, one, and a two. That would be what I would definitely get, Rin, Rin Twin. That would be what, what I would get. Yeah, all your models are murky. Yeah, that's why, because you're using too much wash. All right, I think this is getting dry up here, so watch what happens. I'm only gonna highlight the little cross thing on his, on his helm, and it'll create a little bit of a contrast. Now, right now, if you show somebody this who's an experienced person, they're gonna say, needs more contrast, and that's, that's gonna be correct. You will need contrast. But as a beginner, at this stage, what's more important is that you learn to put paint on it cleanly, right? It's better to learn how to paint clean. You can learn all that contrast stuff later. And you can tell them I said that. Tell them, okay, that's, for, that's more intermediate, just say that. Contrast is more intermediate, I'm doing basics. There's always gonna be a critic out there. All right, this buckle I'm gonna get to be silver. He's looking pretty nice. You could you could play D&D &D with him in a heartbeat, right? Now, they always have these little broccoli bases on. I'm gonna check something here. There we go. Um, for I would paint it. Um, let's just use a dark green. I, I tend to not use, this is camo green, that's a good green. Just don't use this color green, it's always gonna look cheesy. This is like a erati green. This is, you see the difference between those two greens? This one is really, really Kelly green and this one is more camo. Ah, just, oh no. Don't, don't shake your paint while they're open. Do I pre-thin? Yes. Do I paint right from the bottle? Um, you can, so on Bones models, if you don't have it primed, you have to paint from the bottle because um, Bones models are a little bit hydrophobic. Your son starts first grade. This stream is just what it is. You gotta, you gotta have all your time to yourself, don't you? You could even do this stream with your son. This is a good, good, uh, Good stream for kids, because you can show them. You can stop the video too and explain stuff. All right, we've gone about five minutes over for my little one hour TED talk here about basic basics. Our next one, 
is um, going to be metallic metals. So if you want to see that, stick around for our true metallic metals class. That'll be the next one. And it's basic, it's going to be a little bit more in depth than this was because obviously this is basics. See how everything is drying really dark? We're going to have to go back in real quick and highlight, highlight that. There is a, oh, this is a technique you have to show a beginner because it really can make huge difference for people. I'm going to take an old brush that is like kind of chopped off like this. This is actually, I bought this like this. I'm going to mix a little bit of my paint with it. It's already dry. There's no water, it's just paint. And then I'm going to wipe it off until, until it's most, it's not clean, but there's just a little bit of paint in it. Just a little, I'm going to show you how to dry brush. Okay. Then it, it's got to be dry though. The, the model and the brush have to be dry. See there, I'm just going over the metals. You can hit those highlights. Hit that on there. Look at that. Makes a big difference already, doesn't it? This is awesome. Even more experience should go back to basics. I agree. I agree. Everybody can gain from remembering how to do stuff. All right, so there. That's our basic basics. Wait, let's do this one more time on the front so you can see that get highlighted. I'm wiping off the excess paint. You don't want too much paint or you're just painting, right? You're not dry brushing. Dry brushing, um, we'll show you some dry brushing on this guy just for kicks. All right, a little bit of dry brushing on this side too, just a little bit. All right, that's, that's it. That's how to paint a basic, basic model. If you wanna get all like fancy, you can go in and you can start blinging out your little details and stuff. There's details on here that you might want to paint these little buttons. I mean, there's so many things you can get really into, right? The little belt buckle, boop, boop. That's going to take a little bit more brush control. For now, just try to paint clean. Okay. There we go. I'm just going to hold this here for a second so that I'll know where to do the, I'm going to do some screen, some um, breaks so that I'll be able to split this into three videos. Apparently Amazon doesn't want you to have the slow dry. They want to push it back again. Oh no, that keeps happening, model newbie. What's going on? Geeky says, well, I will still have my daughter with me. They'd both love to get cheap miniatures. Bones are the way to go. All right, now. We're gonna start the metallic metals class. Now, this guy has mostly metals in the front. He's got, um, he's got a cape in the back. If we have time in our hour, we'll go, we'll go to do that. Ah, Bulos, thank you. I like that kind of test. <laughs> My, mad love. Oh yeah. Model movies, let's see. You just try to paint full stop. Good, jo good job. Okay, so now, um, four metallic metals. This guy, we're gonna, so this is gonna be a more intermediate class, but I'm gonna show you. We're gonna layers first. Um, I'm going to do, I'm gonna do a lot of silver. We're gonna do some bronze. Let me get out my metals here. Okay, there's, there's gold. We'll use gold too. That's a good one. Black metal. So I've got a really good gold recipe for you guys. Um, that's the wrong color. Oh yeah, brassy brass is good. This is a good color, brassy brass. Um, you're gonna want to get some kind of uh, metallic medium if you're gonna do metals. Metallic medium by Vallejo or Scale 75 has white alchemy. 
This is also like a metallic medium. And the Pro Acryl has the new color. It's the white, it's the uh, uh, metallic medium also. Where is it? Here it is, metallic medium by Pro Acryl. There we go. Just in time for metal. Yeah, or Bean, how are you? Diomedes says, Shoshi, I've taken notes. I have some ideas on streamlining. No, I definitely send me, yeah, send me all your info because I need, I need streamlining for sure. This, that's why I'm doing this is so that I can streamline for my classes. It'll be good. All right, I'm using a dark metal and a silver and then I'll have my, because when you, when you highlight, see we have dark, medium, light. When you're doing your metal, something people don't think about is you want shadows, you want highlights, and you want um, a mid-tone, right? So I've already got these on my palette. I'm gonna start with his armor. Let's start with his helmet, because that I'm gonna make silver. We'll make it a steel color. So I'm gonna start with this dark metal color, right? Oh, there's some piece of plastic right there. There we go. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm making the horns metal also because we're teaching metals, right? Okay, so that's my base for my, for my silver right there. I'm gonna make this weapon also be silver. And what the heck, we can make the whole thing silver, can't we? Yeah, it is cool, Mini. Um, he's kind of like a fighter guy. Silver, silver, silver. Notice that, that how, notice how shiny the metallic looks on the black primer. So that's another thing you can do um, as a cheat is you can, um, you can paint on black so that you get that the metallic is made of particles of mica, not pigment. And so it always looks better to have an undercoating. So for silver, I use black generally. For gold, we'll use like a reddish color for, for under. Uh-oh, uh-oh what? We are back, stream keeps freezing. Oh no, is everybody freezing? Think of everybody. Shall we take a break? Let's take a stretch break. Okay, let's do a quick stretch break so that way if, you're, if your screen is freezing, that maybe by the time, cranky old nerd, how are you? Video must have died. Died for everyone? Yeah, it's a Twitch thing, I think. Only the one? Everybody. Is everybody back? Let's stretch. Let's stretch. Uh, that way we can make sure every, am I dropping frames? Let me check. Twitch will tell me. Um, I don't, so, so Streamlabs changed their format and I can't see if frames are being dropped. I don't think, it, I don't know. I don't have any way of telling. You're still in and out. You think you forgot to stretch today and every other day for the past 12 years? Well, bummer guys, that stinks. Right in between our, our demonstrations. Does anybody, Mike, can you do me a favor and check me on Twitch to see if I'm dropping frames? I don't know if you can check. Let me double check over here. 
live. Okay, there we go. Nope. I mean, so it should tell you OBS. It it doesn't because they changed the, everything. Okay, well, it, it updated, and I don't know. Uh, okay. Um, it is dropping frames. It's dropping frames. I don't see. I just see bad video. You see bad video. You broke the stream, oh no! It's, I don't think so. I think that Twitch is having issues. Hmm. What else do you have open on your computer? Y'all. Uh, um, yeah. Make sure you aren't also live viewing yourself at the same time. Oh, it says there was a network error. It was, it's, Twitch had a network error. I was just starting to restart your stream. Okay, let me start, let me restart stream, okay guys? Does that sound good? We'll be right back. Yeah, I'll be right back, okay? They can't really hear you most likely.